Hello, dear learners. I, Sormistarani Borua, Assistant Professor, Agricultural and Allied Sciences, Guru Prakhada School of Vocational Studies, welcome you all to today's class. In the last class, we discussed about uh, land preparation and planting of tea. So, after planting of tea, uh, there is a practice called Young Tea Management. So, in this lecture, that is in the unit number 6, we will discuss about Young Tea Management. So, Young Tea Management is a very important uh, practices that is being followed in tea cultivations and it is basically done during the period of 4 to 5 years after planting of tea in the main field. And the basic purpose of the practices is to develop a good frame to sustain high yield. And at the same time, side by side, the health and vigor of the plant is also maintained during this period uh, by managing uh, various uh, pest and disease control methods by providing various uh, proper food and nutrition to the plant. So, after going through this unit, you will able to state the objective of training the young tea. Then you will able to describe the different operations adopted in training the young tea. Then describe the methods adopted in bringing up the young tea into bearing. And last, you will able to explain the importance of different cultural practices adopted in young tea management. So, uh, by nature, what is a uh, tea is a small tree or shrub, but uh, to get maximum yield or higher leaf productions, we need to have a, a bushy or sturdy structure of the tea with a good frame. So, in this unit, we shall discuss various operations, various methods that are adopted to train the young plants to form a low spreading bush with a well developed frame and branch systems. So now uh, come to the point training. So what is actually training? Training is a practice uh, that is followed in tree in which the growth of tree is directed to give a proper shape and form. And in tea cultivations or in tea plantation, the main objective of training is to develop a low spreading frame for quick ground coverage to get maximum yield or more leaf productions, to form a plucking table with a convenient height for plucking, then to develop a sturdy bush which is called permanent frame during these formative years and Next is to harvest maximum crop even in the early years to recover the shortest possible time the capital invested in the planting. Though emphasis is uh, given on higher productions or maximum yield, but at the same time the growth, the health and vigor of the plant is not uh, sacrificed only on the cost of the maximum yield. So, there must be a balance between these two factors, the maximum yield and health and vigor of the plant. And for these purposes, various uh, measures to be taken, various uh, measures to be taken or various uh, management practices should be followed to uh, keep the balance between these two factors. And this uh, good management practice basically consists of the following like, Adoptions of various suitable measures to increase the root volume, to increase the density and area of the bush frame, and adoption of various efficient and timely plant protection measures to relieve the young plants from unnecessary external stress, thereby allowing the plants to grow with their full potential. Judicious harvesting of the shoots without affecting the health and vigor of the plants, then proper and timely applications of manures and fertilizers with the growth requirement of the plants according to their requirements, manures and fertilizers should be applied at a timely durations. Then adoption of suitable cultural operations like drainage, shade, irrigation, etc. should be provided to uh, give a healthy environment 
for the luxuriant growth of the plants. Now uh, come uh, to the frame formations. So one of the main aim of the training of tea cultivation or in young tea plants is to develop a good uh, permanent frame during the formative years. So the main objective is to sustain higher yield. Uh, the frame developed, de developed during this uh, initial period is called uh, permanent frame because this frame is not disturbed throughout the lifespan of the tea plant until and unless uh, they are damaged by any insect, pest or diseases or any other external factors. So therefore in such cases uh, rejuvenations need to be followed in deep cultivations by removing these damaged portions. So there are various operations uh, basically adopted uh, in training of tea. Uh, they, uh, these are the first one is decentering. So decentering is, uh, is the removal of stem, main stem at a height of 20 centimeter from the ground level and you can see in the pictures and decentering is done when the um, tea plant is transferred from the nursery to the main field okay and when this tea plant makes a flash of growth and when there is a sufficient amount of starch in the roots so during this decentering process we have to keep in mind that there should be sufficient amount of starch content in the uh, root so i will show you in later on what is how to perform the starch test so this is uh, about decentering then next is thumb breaking or lung pruning so thumb breaking or lung pruning is done when there is only one main stem and there is no any lateral branches so it is also done at a height of 20 centimeter from the ground level okay so what is done in thumb breaking you have to keep the stem in between your index finger and thumb and then the stem should be broken uh, in such a way that one part of the stem should be intact in the main stem for movement of the nutrient and waters then this broken stem should be bent towards the ground uh, in south or west direction depending upon the direction of the row so this is uh, what is called lung pruning or thumb breaking then the next operation is debudding debudding is uh, nothing but the removal of the buds and in tea plantations the leaf axils are removed from the upper portions of the plants leaving the lower 20 centimeter untouched and this is done with the help of a small hexo blade or using finger so in all the operations of the training the basic principle is to suppress the apical dominance so what is apical dominance apical dominance is a phenomena where the main shoots dominates and inhibits the growth of lateral branches and in these operations, uh, all the operations of this training process in tea, the main objective is to dominate these epic, uh, main suits, the growth of the main suits, so that we can have a uh, sturdy frame with low branches. So the main objective, main principles of this training is to eliminate the apical dominance uh, by adopting different operations so that we can get a low spreading tea plant with strong frame then next come to the we have i have already told that uh, during decentering processes there should be maximum amount of sufficient amount of starch content should be there in the roots okay so now how to perform this starch test so to perform this uh, starch test first you have to select randomly 10 to 12 plants per big of land then uh, about 0.5 centimeter thickness pencil thickness which is called pencil thickness of roots should be collected from the selected plants by digging a hole of 10 centimeter away from the collar of the plants 
and this digging should be done uh, up to depth of 10 to 15 centimeter. Then a sharp cut should be given on the end of the root and put one to two drops of iodine solutions on the cutting and wait for five minutes. So after five minutes, if we see deep blue color in the cut end, then we can see we can uh, say that the there is a maximum sufficient amount of starch content in the roots. If there is no change, then we can say that there is no any starch content and we should not go for the decentering process. So now how to prepare this iodine solutions? To, uh, so to prepare this iodine solution, first we have to take 1 gram of iodine and 1 gram of potassium and dissolve this amount of iodine and potassium in 4 to 5 ml of distilled water in a glass beaker and then the volume should be made up to 100 ml adding by adding distilled water and this solution should be preserved in a color colored bottle wrapping with carbon paper so this is how we can prepare the iodine solutions so with this we uh, came to the end of today's lecture so let's have a look what we have discussed today so initial four to five years of uh, planting in tea is called crucial why it is called crucial because in this period it is called formative period in this period the tea plants are trained to form a low spreading bush then we have discussed uh, various objective of training uh, like to develop a spreading frame for quick ground coverage, to develop a sturdy boost frame for sustained luxuriant vegetative growth, infusers yes, to facilitate easy plucking at a convenient boost height and to harvest maximum possible crops during the early years. Then we have discussed uh, what is frame formation and various methods adopted in frame formation process. What is permanent frame? Uh, the frame developed during this period formative period is called permanent frame because this frame is not disturbed uh, throughout the lifespan of the tea plant until and unless the tea plant is affected by any other disease based or any other external factors then we have uh, discussed about what is apical dominance and what is the principles of all the operations all the methods followed in training of tea plantations then what is star stays and how to perform it so in the next class we'll discuss about uh, frame forming prune then methods of bringing up of young tea then cultural practices different cultural practices adopted in young tea management so with this i conclude today thank you thank you very much